everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. We're the newcomers. Another week has passed. So much going on down here. We've had a busy week. We've done a lot of things because this weather is the kind of weather you want. It's gorgeous. I actually went outside and sat on the back patio and put out the awning and it was just divine. A lot of people like to swim in when, you know, when the water's 80 degrees, 85 mm -hmm. degrees. Mm -hmm. Now I me, mean, I like it a little warmer than that. Yeah. But uh, we're still swimming and we're still having a good time and the pools are getting still busy. They are busy. Today's show, you're going to learn, does the villages have a dress code? And is there a disadvantage to a corner lot or a golf cart lot? And Amy Pittman, she has a column with us and she's going to discuss legal things for you today. And do you want to know which season is our favorite season of the year? All that and more. Hit it, Wally. Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. We told you last week we're very happy with our website. Uh, it's put together by Landmark Web Design, and it's great. If you want to go there and check it out, please do. It's jerryandlinda.com. That's it. Mm -hmm. And we have a list of our contractors. We have uh, our Amazon uh, storefront there, a link to every one of our shows. Yeah. And I think you'll like it. So check that out if you get a chance. We sure hope you enjoyed that Thursday show. We sure had a lot of fun <laughs> putting that on for you. You know, I've had that in the works for two years. And I always thought, should I or shouldn't I or whatever. But, you know, the older I get, the less I care. So I went ahead, we went ahead and did it. And I think we're all that way. We get less inhibited as we get older because mm -hmm. we've earned it. Yeah. We've earned the right, have we not? People, <laughs> you know, that that show was brought on by COVID. COVID-19 kept us in the home for so long. And we started thinking about all the things we loved. You know, we try to keep things positive. So Jerry kept a list. So he kept thinking about doing this show about the toilet. And I we already had them. We knew how great they were. Yeah. Yeah. And so I said, oh, no, we shouldn't make it about a toilet. But we did. <laughs> and I think it was fun. And I know you enjoyed it. And thank you for watching it. And today we have a feature which is going to be a regular feature. We're not going to do it every week, but we'll do it every month or maybe every couple weeks. There's an attorney, a local attorney, Amy Pittman. She has a law office up in the Spanish Springs, basically, area. It's Oxford. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met her through doing business for us. You know, we took our, our uh, trust and will there, and mm -hmm. she did them. And wonderful lady. Yes. And she does them, and she's agreed to do some legal questions for us. So here she is. Hi, Jerry and Linda. It's Amy Pittman with Pittman Law. And I wanted to make sure everyone knew that this week is Estate Planning Awareness Week. And what that means to us as estate planning attorneys is we really want to make sure everyone's looking at their current estate plan, if you have one. Take it out, take your binder, your folder out from wherever the attorney that drafted it. Look at those documents, your power of attorneys, your healthcare documents, your trust or wills, to make sure that they're still current to your situation. If you haven't done an estate plan, like we talked about before, a will or power of attorney or your healthcare surrogate, definitely reach out to an estate planning attorney so that you can start having that conversation with a professional so that you can get everything in place for your family or loved ones. Again, we're excited here at Pittman Law Office that it's Estate Planning Awareness Week. And please feel free to contact our office, 352-399-6944. Thanks, and I hope you all have a great day. And remember, if you have any legal question, now she's not going to get specific, you know, so don't describe what your husband did or what your wife did or whatever. <laughs> but if you have a general question about wills, trusts, banking, retirement, uh, marriage, uh, you know, all the legalities of the finances. Mm -hmm. Shoot us the question. We'll forward it to her and she'll be happy to answer. She's great at it. Mm -hmm. Here's our viewer video question of the week. It's from Mark and Chris. Hi. Mark and well, you do it then. Blooper. <laughs> you go first. Mark and Chris from Colorado. We're thinking about coming down on our little tour there lifestyle lifestyle tour and we were wondering uh, about cruising since we retired out of the villages since we retired two years ago got hooked on cruising do you have any transportation or is there a cruising club or any kind of transportation to the 
Chris Pierce. We really like your guys' show. We watch it all the time. We'll see you when we get there. Bye. Well, that's a subject we knew very little about until five years ago. Right. We had never been on a cruise until five years ago right now. We went on a Canadian cruise with Royal Caribbean. We did. We did that when we lived in Indiana. And uh, it was great. And then we came down here, and when this channel took off, we were asked if we'd be interested in hosting some cruises. So we have. So we have a pretty good grasp on what goes on. Cruises from here, you can go to Cape Canaveral, mm -hmm. and you can go on cruises there, but they're very limited as to where they go from, from Cape Canaveral. I mean, it takes you a whole day to get to Miami, practically. So why not go to Miami, right? Well, it's a four and a half hour drive, but lots and lots of cruises leave Miami and its sister city there, Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can cruise easily. Now, if you read the advertisements, you'll see some cruises based out of Orlando, but those are basically Cape Canaveral cruises. Right. You'd get on a bus in Orlando, I guess, and, and cruise over. Mm -hmm. But right here in the villages, for example, when we went on our cruise to the Bahamas, we boarded buses and we went to Cape Canaveral. The next cruise we went on was also to the Bahamas, but a different section. We drove to Miami on a bus right. and we took the cruise. Now we're going to do the same thing in what? Uh, January. January. We're going to go, to go to Fort Lauderdale and we're going to take a cruise. And again, we get bus transportation, one of the big Greyhounds, it's air conditioned and, and it's, it's mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. And there are some local companies that provide cruise transportations. Mm -hmm. So if you're a cruiser, don't be worried that you're 60 or 70 miles from the ocean here. Mm -hmm. You can still find some cruises. Yeah. Our next question is from Laura in Pennsylvania. With Halloween quickly approaching, approaching, is there a lot of decorating happening? Do you get any trick-or-treaters on Halloween night? Thanks and keep up the great work entertaining and informing. A lot of people decorate their homes for Halloween outside, even inside. Um, they go up usually October 1st. You don't keep them up over a month. And uh, we do not get trick-or-treaters. Uh, no. There are no children in the villages, and most of those kids are home with their parents and trick or treating in their neighborhoods. We like them. We'd love to get some. Yeah. You know, we but uh, you know we love to see the little kids yeah. in their costumes. But there aren't that many here now. If we if we had some friends that were hosting grandchildren, they would come by. Mm -hmm. But basically, that's a rarity. So no trick or treaters. Vinny, you've heard me talk about Vinny. He's got the big Fourth of July celebration. The big. Uh, Halloween celebration, the Christmas, Christmas celebration. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're going to show you some footage from his house coming up in a week or so. And I think you'll be amazed at what he's done this year. It's yeah. top of the line. Right. Now, there are lots of trick-or-treater activities outside the villages, right outside. And a lot of the churches will do truck, uh, what they call it, trunk and treat or truck or treat. I forget how to say that. That was a tongue twister. But um, then you can take your ch grandchildren there to that if you do have grandchildren coming. I have a food allergy to pork and Linda fixed me one and a half sandwiches. Yes, I had a half extra of ham salad a while ago and it just makes me like that. His throat closes up with but, any uh, sugar or But it's pork. worth it. I mean, come on. You know it is. I don't alter my diet. Pork chops do me the same thing. Mm -hmm. Sausage, I still Bacon, go for it. I mean, anything pork. Just as long as I go out to breakfast, I carry an EpiPen. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're heading that way. Not really, but I probably need one. Yeah. Okay, here's a question about golf. We play a lot of golf, and I'm interested in learning what advantages the golf course ambassadors receive if they volunteer to serve as course starters. Do they receive course tee time priority, discounts on championship course prices? Well, I, I know Linda knows more about this than I do, actually, but the answer to your questions are yes. And what did you find out? Well, you don't volunteer to be an ambassador. If you're an ambassador, you're employed by the, the golf course. And you work a six-hour shift. And you do that three times a week, I believe, uh, on different courses. Uh, a championship course and two executive courses you're in charge of. But you will get 50% off of your championship golf uh, fees. So that's pretty great 
um, because the championship golf courses are a little bit more expensive. And in the pro shop, a, a lot more expensive. And then in the um, pro shop, you would get uh, 25% off clothing that's regular priced and then uh, 10% off of your regular price, price golf clubs. Right. Now, you said they're in charge. Obviously, an ambassador is really not in charge of anything, really. Mm -hmm. But they, they man the starter shacks right. mm -hmm. at both the executive and the championship and then they're also an ambassador that also patrols both the executive and championship. And their job is to keep the play sped up. Right. And to, they, they will regularly carry sand and fill in the divots. I've seen them. Pick up the tees mm -hmm. or the cigarette butts that some, uh, uh, you know, somebody. person dropped there. Yeah. But uh, it's a good job and people don't do it for the money more or less. I, I think it's up to $14 now. I think it is. But they do it for the, the discount on the golf fees. Yeah. This question is from Lisa. How old does a child need to be to golf by themselves? We were playing a pitch and putt last week, and there was a kid, probably 14 or 15, playing by himself. I thought it was 18 for a guest to use amenities without the villager present. Can you confirm? Jerry, you're going to take this one for me. Common sense told me that there are... So many 12-year-olds that could beat me in golf that they <laughs> probably should be allowed to play anywhere. Yeah. You know, our sons are good examples. Mm -hmm. You know, by age 12, they had already been on several of those junior tours and, and were really good golfers. Mm -hmm. And they would play all the courses in Indiana by themselves. A group of three or four would go and play. Here I called, and uh, I called three courses, and nobody knew. They just said, we think you need an adult. I said, well, can you tell me do we need an adult? And they said, mm, you know, just make, they said, just use common sense. I said, well, okay. Or rule of thumb was one. Yeah, rule of thumb. Rule I said, well, thumb. I don't know. You know, that's not really a policy. Can you find the policy for me? No, we didn't know. So I called Lopez Legacy and they told me what they thought was the answer. And about 20 minutes later, my phone rings. They had looked at caller ID and called me back to tell me they'd looked it up and to be alone without a resident or an adult that you'd have to be 19. Okay. So that's the rule. You know, it's just like the, the pools, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you've got to be a certain age to be able to use it without someone with a village's ID or at least an adult on the championship mm -hmm. courses because anybody can come in and play a championship. Right. Mm -hmm. The executives now, that, that would necessitate an ID card to play. Even if your grandpa brought you, if you didn't have a guest pass, you couldn't play. Right. You'd have to have a guest pass for the executive. Right. Mm -hmm. This question from Rosa in upstate New York. We have a lot of New Yorkers here, don't we? We do. She asks, what is the village's dress code? I haven't seen any guys with tank tops. Are they allowed? You know, Rosa, what, I'll give you an example. We're having a visitor in a couple of weeks. And she asked me, what should I bring? And I, she asked me, how much fancy clothes should I bring? And I told her, you don't need to bring any. I said, down here, it's Florida. You know, you dress for comfort. Mm -hmm. So the dress code here is that way. Linda, tell me. I, this, was so, this was so funny. She saw a guy driving his golf cart the other day. And I've got it on video, but I'm not going to do it because he might see it. But this guy, you know, he didn't have a great physique. And uh, he was driving without a shirt. What did you say? Is that allowed? <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not. <laughs> yeah, he was definitely uh, in the buff from his waist up. But boy, he really should have had a shirt on. And uh, I was a little bit shocked. But um, yeah. Yeah, well, was, like I said I earlier. I couldn't unsee that for a while. <laughs> when you when you paid your dues your whole life, you know, you come here, you feel like, hey, what the heck? I and guess. that's what it is. No, you can wear anything you like. If you have a tank top. Or your, your boyfriend has a tank top or your husband. Yeah, they can wear it. You can wear your halter top. Yeah. You know, anybody can wear spandex. That's obvious, yeah. right? That's obvious. Now, there is a dress code at the golf courses. You know, men do have to wear a, a, a collar. A, a, what do you call Collared it? Collared shirt. Collared shirt. A collared shirt. And um, women, not so much. They don't have to have a collared shirt. You know, you've heard the story. She got yelled at the very first <laughs> time we ever played golf here. Right. She had a T-shirt on that said Air Force. I did. 
and they made her cry. I cried. I cried, and I had to sit in the car. I said, I'm just watching him. I didn't No, she wasn't even playing. Golf. She was going to sit in the cart and just sit there and watch me. And that was my first experience at the golf course. Mm -hmm. I was a little bit shocked. But anyway, I never wore a shirt again that had a name on it. <laughs> the other day we saw Jalen. Friday it was. Yeah. And there were people there that had everything on. Shorts, oh, yeah. baseball caps, blue jeans, three-piece suits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Some women were decked out. Oh, yeah. It's Florida. It's Florida. It's Florida. Yeah. This is from Bobby in, K in Kentucky. You have lived there a long time now, even though you still call yourselves newcomers. I like four seasons. You only have one. Hot. Knowing that, what period of the year would you say is your favorite? Well, Bobby, let me explain something. We have more than just one season here. We have a winter that is cold. In January, our our bushes were frostbitten. It was down in the 30s. So, and we wore gloves and hats, and we are cold here in January. So, we have more than one season. We have, uh, and it's cool right now. Uh, a couple weeks ago, it was really beautiful weather in the 50s. We had our doors open, and the breeze was coming through. It was glorious. That's the only, mm -hmm. uh, you know, winter and a little bit of fall and a little bit of spring, we can leave our door and windows open. Yeah. And it's it's beautiful. And that breeze is so nice. Yeah. But we did have to cover up our plants last yeah. winter. And we lost some. And so when we had this new project done that you all looked at, we didn't choose any plants that we thought would freeze out. Right. So we really do have four seasons, but we have a longer summer season. And uh, so we do have and our favorite pretty much what do we say? Spring. Right now is is one of my favorite times yeah, of year. Yeah, spring and fall. We love it. Spring and fall here. Absolutely. Chuck and Nikki Parsons write, We're considering buying a lot that backs up to a cart path without a wall. Do you think the golf cart noise would be unbearable? Also, we have our eye on a corner lot, but wonder if that would be a mistake too. I don't think I want a house located deep within a neighborhood. It's all personal preference. Sure. I know, though, when, when we drive along Hillsborough Trail mm -hmm. or uh, the multimodal path along Morris Boulevard, mm -hmm. we're right behind people's homes. And I've often said I would not like that myself. Not for the noise, because I, our lanai is pretty well noise-proof. Mm -hmm. It's for the visual. I can tell what people are watching on TV. Yeah. You know, I can see they're playing cards. I saw we drove by one the other day. The guy had a straight flush. <laughs> Not really. We knew what commercial they were watching. Yeah. 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 So I wouldn't like that. Yeah. But as far as backing up to a golf course, you know, the story is that it, at the crack of dawn, they're out mowing the grass. Yeah. So you're going to hear that at times. Yeah. Most people, it doesn't bother. Yeah. But that happens. Mm -hmm. That would be nice to live on a golf course, though, if you could tolerate that. Yeah. A corner lot, I think that's busy. You've got cars going both ways. Um, I think living deep in a, in a subdivision is nice. We uh, we get to know our neighbors. We have more street parties, uh, driveway parties. We get to know our neighbors more. I think if you live way out by the big streets, you're not going to get that camaraderie out. Yeah, but full disclosure, mm -hmm. our neighborhood's kind of a dud <laughs> when it comes to driveway parties and uh, there are other streets right here by us that yeah. party hardy, <laughs> but our little street, not so much, no. but, but a lot of people do have that. The thing about a corner lot, it gives you extra room. You can, many of them can build a pool. Lots of people yes. on a quarter lot can, lots are can have a pool. pool and there's more grass to cut and your grass cutter charges more and it takes more water to water to and you, you pay more for irrigation. Mm -hmm. And plus you've got a public view from two sides of your house, which I don't like. Yeah. We're tucked away here. I never thought I'd live this close to anybody. Yeah. But it does not bother us mm -hmm. because we're lucky in the fact that our backyard is fairly private. That's true. Yeah. That is true. So it's all up to you, a corner lot or a private lot. They can be wonderful. Just have to check it out. Get the opinion of neighbors. Yeah. See see how, how loud it is. This question asks, what is going on with Edna's on the green? We enjoy it and are going to be in the villages in December. Will it be open? 
Edna's on the green is going to be, there's going to be a restaurant, a total restaurant. Edna's is going to be Edna's on the green. Uh, it'll be a indoor, outdoor kind of a building, and we're not sure when that will be finished, but uh, I think it's going to be a really good venue for uh, a lot of people to come and see music and have a drink, have a meal. So it's going to be a lovely place. Now, before they had two food trucks there. Yeah. And maybe even an ice cream truck there yeah. also. Yeah. And they're doing away with those and kind of remodeling the whole place to be kind of a, a spot where you can go and have a meal. Mm -hmm. If you've been there before, you know those big live oak trees are gorgeous. Yeah. And they have a patio where they play music out back. And it's, it's really a nice place to go and hang out. Larry and Dee write, are there any indoor pools in the villages? Mm -hmm. I enjoy my water aerobics, and the club I belong to in Baton Rouge has an indoor pool. Baton Rouge. <laughs> that means red stick. It does. It does. Well, there you go. Yeah, and we've got some friends that live in Baton we Rouge. We do. Yeah. Hi, Sharon. Hi, Mike. Yeah. No. There are no indoor pools. Oh. <laughs> Think about it. If they built a glorious indoor pool, she can't even get into water aerobics at, at the... Uh, <laughs> At the rec center, that pool would have a limit of, yeah. you know, maybe 90 people. Yes. And, you know, there are 150,000 people in the villages. Mm -hmm. So it's, it would become really popular in the winter. And I think it would be a, a, a just craziness trying to get in there. Yeah, you'd be sitting out there two hours early to get in. They probably have to make a limit, time limit. Yeah. And I don't know, it seems like a big nightmare. But it would be wonderful. You know, it would be nice. I love the, the Y yeah. back home. Oh, we did. You could go anytime and uh, very nice. But yeah. No, I'm sorry. No indoor pool. Mm-hmm. Learning what advantages the <laughs> Hey, be sure and to check no, start it again. Take three. Black. I mean it wouldn't die, you know. <sighs> it's taking the notes away. He takes them away, tries to get Amy Mason at the Dundee mm -hmm. Dundee pool. It's Dundee. Those Texas road rose uh, roadhouse rolls. <laughs> Let's do that again. Uh, what was Thirsty Shop? Was that terrible? No. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Mandy Cofield. Hi, why do new homes in the villages require the homeowners to add gutters? And why are they only over the front and back doors? We spend a lot of money on our homes, so I expect gutters. Love yes. Mandy, you're just going to have to suck it up. Because <laughs> I checked with the villages and they generally, on new construction, they'll put gutter over the front door, the entrance, mm -hmm. and over the, like you said, probably the back. Not sure about the back. But the rest of the house would be up to you. You know, we have guttering all the way around our home. But it's not really as important here in Florida because we don't have basements like we had back home. Right. Back home, if you had a, a, a no gutters or a problem with your gutter, that water would roll down and come in, in your basement. Here, we don't have that. I've watched our neighbor's house who has no gutters during the hardest rains you can imagine. And that rain hits the ground, and back in Indiana, that would have obliterated the grass. It would, it would have, have eroded trench. everything. Trench. But I don't know. The sand here just seems to take it, and it's not a big deal. But I'm, I'm sorry, you've bought the house, and you're learning like everybody else that sometimes you've got a $400,000 fixer-upper. <laughs> That's true. Out and about. went this past week to World of Beer. We've gone there many times, but we thought we'd kind of showcase it this time because it's a great place to have a great burger. Once a week, they sell a burger for $6.99, I believe, mm -hmm. and you have to buy a drink with it. So that makes it a $10 yeah. 
burger. <laughs> Ten dollar burger. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And let's get real, though. It is a good burger. Mm-hmm. And uh, to my experience, and we've been there quite a few times, mm-hmm. the, the servers are really nice. Yeah. The location is primo. Is that what you say? Mm-hmm. It's right across from the square in Brownwood. Yes. And so you go down, and if you can find a parking place close, you you know, you get out and you eat, then you go over the square. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you may go behind it. We park behind it sometimes. Yeah. There's a huge parking lot right behind it. And uh, that's the way all the squares are. There's a lot of parking on the other side of all the buildings yes. at the square. You can find a place and walk. The World of Beer is nothing fancy. It's nice. There's a bar around the uh, outside, yeah. Yeah. and you can sit out there and enjoy a meal. And people will walk by, and you'll see them. There's a, a fellow there that takes his cockatoo every we night. Do see and that. Uh, we, we go there and play with the bird every once in a while. Right. Uh, Let me tell you, with your burger, we have been, we've now have a kick in a, a, we love their crispy tater tots. Yeah. And they are delicious. And a lot of people put ketchup on theirs, but my thing is put ranch dressing on it. You're going to love it. I will say that World of Beer is is really a good place to uh, go with your friends. We do it on a regular basis. On this trip, we were with Pat and Brenda. They're dear friends of ours that live here part-time now. But they're from our old stomping grounds back in Indiana. It was good. Okay, so we all got the burger Mm -hmm. and the tater tots. What did it cost? For the two of us, $21.30 plus tip. Right. It's about as good as you can do Mm -hmm. down here. So we like it. Mm -hmm. World of beer. Now, listen, when we tell you these things, we know (laughs) it's going to get crowded there. So if you ever see us come up there on burger night, and there's like a 50 minute, 75 minute wait, and you got a couple spots at your table. Just motion us yeah. on over, and we'll uh, we'll join you. We'll join you. <laughs> All right, November 18th. I told you last week we are going to see a he's a magician, illusionist, hypnotist, mentalist. mentalist. He does it all. Michael C. Anthony. It's at the Wildwood Community Center. Uh, it's 25 bucks, and I think it's going to be well worth it. He did a really cool, what would you call it, trick, yeah. illusion, illusion, on the phone with us, on the Zoom call. Mm-hmm. And it blew my mind because, I I mean, I'd never met him, never talked to him. And I pulled something out of the thin air, and he, he guessed it. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing, 25 bucks. That's on November 18th. We're going. I, I say we have a big Jerry and Linda party, so come on over and join us. <laughs> and uh, be sure and say hi to us if you're there. That's true. The word scramble. Do you like to play it? How many of you play it? Do you? How do you do it? Do you freeze your screen and then copy down the letters and try to figure it out? That's a good way to do it. A lot of people get the correct answers. Now, I'm trying to make all of these have something to do with the villages in some way or shape or form, right? And this last week, the answer was Mark Morse. Mark Morse. I think it said first there was Harold and then Gary and now... And, of course, he's part of the founding family and uh, leads the way. Now, this week, it's a little more obscure. The clue, three of 67, these are important to the villages. And there are three spots to fill. I was very careful to get the right number of spaces for you. So see if you can find that out. And if you do, let us know you know it without Right in, yeah, without telling the answer. Thank you very much. It's time for Sweet and Salty. We had some communication from several people this week that said, don't give the naysayers an audience. Mm-hmm. Don't say anything about the salty. It, it really it doesn't bother us as long as it's not threatening, which some of them have been. But most of them are, you know, they're, some of them are funny to me. I don't know. If, I think they're funny to you, too, sometimes. So I guess we'll keep doing it for a while. And, you know, if it gets too obnoxious, we'll cut it out. But, but And you salty people will put you on the prayer list. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sweet comment from Kurt Wilcox. I am 53, and I will have watched all of your videos because I love you guys because you are wholesome and genuine and within the next seven-ish years, all I'm doing now is saving up so I can buy a house there and live the dream. All because y'all. Love y'all. 
<laughs> well, Kurt, we, we hope it comes true for you. And, and we, most of all, we hope we're still here in seven years. <laughs> yes, we do. Hope I don't know if we'll have a show or not in seven years, but, uh, <laughs> you know, just save your money mm -hmm. and keep your eye on what's going on up here. And uh, thanks for watching our videos. Yeah, like I always say, we'll see you when you get here. Like salty, though. Salty this week. It's from a lady. Well, a female. Sophia. Sophia says, if you're a picky person, you have found your people in the villages. No such thing as live and let live. I get claustrophobia just listening to these videos. It's really torture. I know. I have to stop watching these things. I just feel sorry for you people putting up with the never-ending BS. <laughs> I mean, I have been accused of throwing out some BS every once in a while. <laughs> And I do, but I, it's fine. We're just having fun, Sophia. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to uh, educate and entertain. And that's what it is. But it's, I'm glad to know that you are still watching. And we're going to keep on trying to have fun. I mean, who, who wants to watch it if we just sit here and read? We, we have to clown around a little bit, don't we? We do. <laughs> Time for shout outs. Well, we're going to recognize friends of our channel. You'll see their names scrolling across the top. Maybe they follow us on Facebook. Maybe they subscribe here on YouTube. You know, whatever the reason, we love you. We're so thankful for you. And you are the reason that we keep this show going. Mm -hmm. So thanks so much. Absolutely. We had a really fun letter, an email that came in today. And it was from a, a fellow that started emailing us last week. And, he, and he's up in age a little bit. His name's Joe. And he's just a, a, a joy to read and to see. And he really loved that video we did on the Toto toilet. And he wrote in today and told us that his 61st anniversary is in two days. And he's not buying flowers. He's getting his wife the Toto toilet. <laughs> I hope I didn't spoil the surprise for you, Joe. But uh, <laughs> that you are quite a man to take care of your honey like that. Charles and Carla are avid watchers and are here for their first visit this week. Welcome, and we hope you have a great time. We know you will. Yes. We met Aaron and Amy Mason at the Dunedin Pool. They've come to the villages four years in a row to rent, and I have a feeling that they're going to be living here before too long. Yeah. We're happy to put you on our shout-outs with a happy anniversary. Joy sent us this picture of her husband, Chuck, and guess where they are? Mm. They're teasing Jerry. Pictures of those Texas Roadhouse Rolls. I love those things. Mm -hmm. I just love them. And they make that special the butter. Cinnamon butter or cinnamon something butter. like that. Yeah. That is good stuff. I really go there for the rolls. Yeah. yeah, he does. And you know, Jerry, after we go there, he'll come back and he says, can you make some of those rolls? And then we actually uh, looked up the recipe. There is a recipe for them. So... Well, these, why haven't I had any then? <laughs> well, yeah, I have to let the dough rest. I'm not a good baker with rolls. I, that's that's not my thing. So, if we we should try it, we, we maybe we should do that together. Hmm. <laughs> Stan and Terry are from Colorado. We had the pleasure of meeting them last week. They were on a lifestyle visit. They are two of the nicest folks ever. And uh, in fact, we ate a meal with them over we at Bluefin. Sure, we sure did. It was delicious. And that's going to do it for this week's edition of. Be sure to tune in for Thursday's show. If it works out, if I get it finished, I'm going to show you my day with the Leatherneck Warriors dragon boating on Lake Sumter. You'll want to see that. Yeah, it's a, it's a great activity, and those are some special people. Hey, be sure and check out our website, jerryandlinda.com, and on the right side, you can hit that follow button. We certainly would appreciate that. And if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to our channel and share it with all your friends. Until next time. See you when you get here.